their perspective is. Put some things in their perspective about how it says it can't start a video yet. Uh, about how that our Christian life ought to be structured. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. You know how you come to Christ and, and then the thing that you ought to do, the order on how things in your life ought to be set up. Okay? You, you, you understand better as we get into it. But we're going to be found this morning in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. That's where we'll start at. Amen. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, are you there? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. I'm sorry. Didn't give you the verse, did I? Uh, verse 24. Let's read 24 and let's read down to 29. Amen. Are we there? I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the hypocrites or the scribes. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory this morning. We thank you so much, God. We magnify your holy name, for your name is holy. And God, we ask you now, God, to send the anointing, oh God, as we get ready to break the bread of life. Uh, let this let, let, let your anointing do what it was designed to do. Let it destroy some yokes and let it lift some burdens this morning. God, we thank you, God, for your word after it's been preached. We ask you to confirm it with signs following me. Give you praise. Glory and honor in Jesus' name in the church declared and said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. I just want to, I want to talk on the wise of these, uh, of these two foundations that Jesus began to share with his disciples. These two foundations. You see, the first one was built on something solid. Amen. And situations came and beat against that house, but the house stood. The second, the second man he called foolish because he built his house quickly. He built his house on something that would not hold the house. Amen. And so the Bible said that the same situation showed up, beat against the house, and the house fell. And not only did it fall, it was a great fall. So I'm going to take this passage of scripture and I'm going to make it relevant for where we are. And talk about the foundations is going to be the doctrine that you've been taught. Because if the doctrine that you've been taught is not solid, is not truth, then your house, you are the house. Then you will not stand. Amen. Amen. And I'm seeing now. Just. I mean you can go anywhere. And listen to any sermon. And see all of the. Error. That's been preached and taught. In these churches. Amen. I've taught some things over the years. That was not right. And I had to go back. And correct some stuff because I go back and I won't, I won't directly come out and tell you that I, I won't directly come out and say, I taught this wrong, I'm correcting. I won't say it, but I'll go back and teach it. And then you'll say, well, no, we talked something different last time. But then the correction, you'll see the correction. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I thought this I, I thought this was going to be so relevant because of the time we live in. 
and um, the word avalanche. Do you know what the word avalanche means? Do you know what an avalanche is? The avalanche is a building up of, of snow, right? And, it's, and it's, it's, it's dangerous. And what that avalanche does is it builds and builds and builds. And then at, at any ungiven time, it breaks it loose and it destroys people. And this is what false doctrine in the body of Christ is doing. It's destroying people. Because anyway, anytime we can dance the way we want to dance and, and live the way we want to live, it's false doctrine. Because God is a God of standards. He's not a God of rules and regulations. He's a God of standards. We are still under the law of God. Not the law of Moses. But the law of God is the Ten Commandments. It's the moral law. It's the moral laws of God. That's what that is. Amen. Never forget that we're under the Ten Commandments. Not the law of Moses. The law of Moses. Not, 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 not the law of Moses. The Bible said that Jesus came and he fulfilled the law. And he put us under grace. But the moral law we're still under. If you go back and look at the, the Ten Commandments that was wrote on stone. You will see that Moses didn't write it. God wrote it with his finger. Amen. Amen. So we're still under the moral laws of God. I'll never forget that. <clears throat> so let's get into this right here. And um, like I said, I, I, I really want to take the word foundation and and, and I want to I want to I want to direct it toward teaching. The word doctrine means teaching. Doctrine, teaching. That's what kind of foundation or teaching that you have have received since you came into the kingdom. Because Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was not preaching the gospel. He was preaching, he, but he preached the gospel, but he wasn't preaching the gospel that, that, that John the Baptist was preaching. John the Baptist was preaching that the kingdom is coming. And when John the Baptist, when Jesus got here, he said the kingdom is here. So he, he went about teaching, preaching the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? They are God's principles. They're not rules and regulations. They're not, they're not do's and don'ts. Amen. They're not do's and don'ts. Jesus came to show us the right way to live, if you will. We were jacked up when we got here. So now he's trying to unjack us. Amen. We were born. Somebody say we were born backwards. Yeah, when you got a baby that comes out the wrong way, you know, the doctor try to turn the baby around. But if they don't turn the baby around, it's called a breach birth. So we were born in sin, shape and iniquity. We were born backwards. We were born trying to make our way back to God. Y'all should have said amen right now. Should have put a pen in that right now and got up and, and told the floor up and sat down. I <laughs> understand what I'm saying though. So this is where we are. We need to find out because there's a lot of stuff that, that, that was put in our foundation. You, you, you notice how some houses sometimes, especially brick houses or even houses with a fire, brick foundation, block foundation, you can see sometimes cracks in the foundation. That means that's foundational, that's foundational damage. The foundation was not poured correctly. It wasn't right. It wasn't. My topic this morning is that if you don't start out right, you won't end up right. <laughs> if you don't start out right, I'm just saying. Because for the most part, we don't start out right. Amen. We don't start out right. Yeah, we don't start out right. And you know if you don't start a thing right, it won't come out right. Amen? So let's move here. I'm going to give you a little bit of my introduction. Jesus in this passage of scripture, he explains the difference between two foundations or, or two different teachings, if you will. The foundation of a building uh, uh, of, the, of a building or ministry is very important. The teaching that you get from the beginning is very important. So if you don't start out right, you won't end up right. So if the foundation is incorrect, then eventually there will be a problem with the building. Are we understanding this? There's going to be a problem with the building. Thank you so much. So for the most part, you know, our, our parents didn't teach us certain things. So some things we learned on our own, but the way we learned it, the stuff we learned wasn't right. So it causes us to veer off a little bit. 
Amen. Oh, God, I, I like when you say amen to me. So if the contractor was supposed to, to pour 20 inches of concrete for a two-story building, mm -hmm, and he only pours eight inches, then it's just a matter of time before that building will collapse. Because the, the weight of the foundation can't hold the weight of the building. Yeah, so if you're if your teaching that you got was erroneous or error from the start, then when you get where you're supposed to go, you ain't gonna be able to stand against the situations in your life. Amen. That's why I always I, I, I make it so so very important that you take time when you come into the kingdom. Don't rush and do anything. Then you got to rush and do nothing. Find you a good ministry. I ain't say no church because we are the church. Find you a good ministry that is teaching the word of I didn't say preaching. I said teaching the word of God. Hey Amen. Why did I say teaching? Because if you already saved, somebody preached the gospel to you. You received that. Now you're born again. Now you need to be taught the word of God. If I stand up in this morning and teach the word to preach the gospel to you. It ain't going to do you no good because you already came to Christ. Amen. I'm going to preach. The Bible said, if you go to Matthew chapter 5, the Bible said Jesus came to his disciples. He met with them probably on the mountain, the Sermon on the Mount. He saw them, he sat them down and he taught them. He taught them. He taught them. Preaching is for sinners. Teaching is for saints. We stand and squall it. Come on, so y'all ain't getting it. No, we're not. Have you got it? When you get it, give it to me. So, so, so when that foundation is not right from the start, that build, you got to do everything right in the foundation if you want the building. That's why you see some of the old buildings. You go downtown, see some of the old buildings been standing for hundreds of years. I wonder why. Why they ain't crumbled yet? Because somebody took the time and built it right. Some of this construction you got today, you buy a house they built in 30 days, I guarantee you, in, in about 30 months, you'll be putting a new roof on it, doing something to it. Something fell off of it. Because they're building them so quick and so cheap. They're cutting corners. You can't cut corners in your walk with God. If you cut corners to get where you're going, it's going to cost you. Y'all don't want to hear this this morning. We don't want to hear this, do we? Amen. Okay, so Jesus here is teaching his disciples on the fundamentals of ministry and life. Mm -hmm. He's giving them instructions here on how to lay the right foundation for their spiritual house. Amen. You got to go into the word of God and you got to sit down with pencil and paper and you got to dissect and dig into this word. I told you, just reading the Bible will send you to hell. Just reading the Bible will send you to hell. Ask me what I'm talking about. Because a lot of the stuff that we're reading, we do, we're just taking it in our, you know, in our language or in our understanding today. And, and you got to you got to look at it from an Eastern point of view. We're Western. If we try to interpret it in our flesh. You can't interpret the word in your flesh. Paul said, in my flesh dwells nothing good. Paul said, if I do sin, it's sin in me. Yeah, we're going to, oh yeah. And then if you and then if you sin, repent. Don't just continue on on top of it. Oh, well, you know, God understands. How do you understand something he died for? How? What, 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 what? Give me Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. Let the move here. Let the flow a little bit. Let the flow a little bit. Grace in the Bible don't mean the same thing everywhere. Grace, excuse me, 6. Romans chapter 6. Uh, and, and listen to me. Uh, we got to, this, this is a part of rightly dividing the scriptures. It's God's unmerited favor, but it don't carry the same uh, un, uh, meaning everywhere in the book. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. I want, you, I, I want you to hear this now. Read for me. 
What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That God may that, that, that grace may abound. Okay. So shall we continue in sin that grace more about, may abound? Did it say God forbid? What did it say? God forbid, how shall, shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Okay, there's, there's one scripture that says where sin is, grace abounds more. You see it? No, I'm not being, grace abound more? One of them said grace abound more. Where there's sin, where sin is, grace abounds more. Okay, it's, it's, it's in there somewhere. Listen to me, though. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. <coughs> here's, here, here's a foundation that a lot of people are teaching. What is it? Okay, give me give, give me Galatians, I mean, Romans five and twenty. Romans five. Okay, read Romans five and twenty for me, because I want to make sure that we we, we 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 dig this out the word, so you don't think we're just throwing some stuff at you. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Okay, now he, here's the foundation that some preachers are laying. Oh, if you sin, grace covers the sin. The more you sin, the more the more grace abounds. You heard that before? Watch this. Here's a revelation for you. Make sure you please write this down. Oh God, I'm not it. When we sin, the grace there is the allotted time that God gives me to repent. It don't cover the sin. Grace don't cover sin. Repentance. To God, he does away with the sin. He forgives the sin. God's unmerited favor there gives me enough time to repent. Talk about laying the right foundation now. Amen. Make sure that what somebody is teaching you, they can take you to the book. They can take you to the Bible. They keep telling you every week, it's in there somewhere, but uh, I'll get back with you. Tell them, look, get back with me before you go, go back to preaching. Yeah. Laying the right foundation, there ain't no hundred dollar prayer lines in the book. That's right. Amen. No, that's called, that's, that, 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 that's called, uh, uh, what is it called? Money laundering. You see how much money you can get people to come up and give you a hundred dollar prayer line. Now I understand now that we shouldn't come before God empty handed. I understand that, but do not pervert the Bible. Don't pervert His Word. He tell He said, "Don't add to, and don't take from." He said, "Because if you do, I'm going to add these plagues to you." That's the Bible. Now we're going to stick with the book over here. Amen. People see us. Why you split down the middle? Word. <laughs> Nothing but word. Yeah, you need to. We, we need this word to split us open so we can get all this junk out of us. And then God stitches up. You know, God, God, God performed the first surgery in the Bible. He, Adam, he puts Adam to sleep and he reaches in and pulls out a woman. No anesthesia. That's why he wants us to be sleep. That's why a lot of times when we sleep, that's when God do his greatest work. That's why we need to go to sleep. That way we ain't got nothing to do with it. We'll mess it up. Well, this is why he put Adam to sleep. I don't, I, Adam, I don't need your opinion. I don't need, I don't need what you think. Amen. I need you out when I go in. Amen. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Can't get that on TBN. <laughs> So listen, let me go a little further. Watch this now. So one thing Jesus never done was cut corners when it came to instructions and directions. He never cut no corners. So preachers, we shouldn't be cutting no corners. Teachers, we shouldn't be cutting no corners with the word. Don't cut no corners with it. Don't be up here preaching what you want, preaching what people want to hear. Preach what God tell you to preach. I don't care what the Holy Spirit is showing you on people. If he don't tell you to say nothing, close your mouth. He may give you a word for one person and you want to prophesy to everybody. You wonder why you're missing it. Because it was you. 
Yeah. Start out right? No. He is not right. The devil is right. He started out right. You didn't you know. No, because I'm gonna tell you something. The eat normally the, the right way is the is the path that, that that's the hardest path. But in the end, it's the best. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know how it is when you learn something and you learn how to do it right? Then when you see other people doing it, that ain't right. I ain't just talking about the word now. I'm talking about other things in our life. Because, you know, my thing is anytime you train somebody to do something, train them the right way. Let them learn the shortcuts on their own. When you train somebody on your job, no shortcuts. It's going to cost you. Because when they jack it up, they come in and see the one that trained it. Amen. I know a lot of shortcuts about how to do a lot of stuff. But I don't show nobody that. I show them the right way. Amen. I show them the right way. I seen a guy on the job one day. That joker was laying two bricks at a time. I said, what are you going to do that? One guy said, hey man, I can't keep up with him. I said, look, you just make sure what you're doing is right. That joker been laying for 30 years. You just make sure. I, I, I couldn't let How you let two bricks at one time? I don't know how he done it. He was doing it. We got paid. <laughs> and it was right. Amen. Let's move a little further. So, ah, uh, let me get back here. Watch this. Not only does uh, Jesus speak about two different foundations, but he also speaks about two different kinds of men. Mm -hmm. First man he talks about it is a man that's obedient, and because of his obedience, he's called a wise man. You can't. We can't be disobedient. God calls us wise. If you're disobedient, you're a fool. And then the Bible said that a fool be a fool by himself. Amen. No, y'all, 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 y'all ain't reading the word. Okay, listen now. So the second man he talks about is a disobedient man that that won't listen or follow instruction. He calls this man a, a, a he calls a man foolish. And then when his house, so when your house is built on the right foundation, well, no matter what comes, it'll stand. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about this life you live in now. Yeah, we're building our life. Our spiritual life, we're building it. We want to make sure we build it and base it on something solid. The first man built his on a rock. Over in the Bible, uh, God tells Moses, go to the rock and speak to it. And water is going to gush out. The rock, the rock over there in Moses' time was symbolic of Jesus. He slapped Jesus, but he didn't speak to him. And it cost him. He slapped the rock. Amen. Over here, the rock is Jesus. See, Peter's name was Petra. Which was pebble, stone. That's all it was. Jesus was is the rock, the rock of our salvation. Amen. And we're gonna see him again. Amen. 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 Watch this here. So, uh, so we talked about first building our houses on the apostles' doctrine. Which is Jesus' teaching. The apostles' teaching. Apostolic doctrine. It don't, it don't have anything to do with denomination. Nothing. Apostolic. Apostolic is an anointing. You can have an apostolic anointing. Apostolic means when apostolic comes into an area, everything around it conforms to it. So when Jesus, who was apostolic, shows up, he draws the crowd. The Bible said when John was baptizing uh, over in the Jordan, amen, then Jesus and his disciples were over here baptizing. The Bible said that Jesus, the disciples said, Jesus baptizing more and more people than you are. Because the apostolic, it could everybody have to conform to it. So apostolic teaching is not bondage, it's freedom. 
When you teach false doctrine, it keeps people in bondage. Watch this. Because the difference is you teaching erroneous doctrine is law. You can't preach. See, whenever you teach the law to people, it keeps them in bondage because they can't they can't fulfill it. Amen. They, 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 they can't fulfill it. The, in Matthew in Romans chapter seven, Paul says the law was perfect and good. So it took a good and perfect man to fulfill a perfect law. Paul said, I couldn't do it. And I'm telling us today, we can't do it. Because he said, if you broke one, you broke them all. Amen. So apostolic teaching. So we found out that your foundation got to be right. Once you, well, you know, once you get saved, get up under a good ministry that's going to teach you the truth. Ain't going to compromise. Where no compromise is. Amen. They don't, they don't care who you are. They just give you the word of God. No partiality. No respect to persons. Don't just throw titles at you to keep you in the ministry. You know, a lot of people do that. They give you a title to keep you in, you dumb and they dumb. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you. You don't give a person, you don't give a person a title just because they they faithful. Amen. Amen. Come on. Boy, y'all better talk to me. Amen. I'm gonna tell you something I got mad about. I got, I got mad about I, I, I trained I, I trained to be a deacon for two years. And when I got ordained a deacon. It was some guys that had been in church six months and ordained with me. I was hot, boy. I'm looking up and saying, man, what you doing here? You just came in the fold. I ain't seen you cut no grass, ain't no lights. Serving nowhere, just showed up. So my thing is now, I, I'm grateful to God that I was able to climb the ladder. I started out ushering. I was in the sound booth. I was a deacon. I was a minister. Amen. The ordained elder and then pastor. See, some people get saved, apostle. <laughs> I, was looking, I, was, I was just looking on. I was just, just looking on my phone last night. One guy had been passing by. We got to celebrate what four years, apostle. Already? You know what you're stepping into? Cause I'm telling you, man, look, people throwing these titles around loosely just because a person throw a title to you. It don't mean God will put his stamp of approval on it. It don't mean that. He said, wait on your calling. He said, Paul said, make uh, uh, make sure of your election and your call. Make sure that where you're operating at, God is calling you, had called you there because only what God called you to do is what he'll anoint. That's it. That he ain't going to anoint nothing else. He call you to intercede. He anoints you right there. Right. He might tell you to come over here and stay all night and pray. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because the thing about God, what He burps in me, He burps in private. Amen. That's real. That's real. He don't burp it in public. You might get recognized in public, but it is not birthed in public. Amen. It's birthed in private. Amen. Adam and fall publicly first. Right. Let me get out of that right there. He made me see. <laughs> Listen to this. So now we want to go to the, the second thing here. Uh, 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 now, once you find that good ministry, you start getting some teaching and gave your life to the Lord. Now you want to start the next. You want to. You want to start the next process. Somebody say sanctification. Because you've already been justified. You, you, you've been justified. Now you be now you need to be sancti. <laughs> sanctified. Because you because you want to see, see Jesus tells the disciples this go to Jerusalem and stay there till you've been endued with power from on high. He said, but watch this now, because he had already equipped these, he, he had already equipped his 12. 
and the, and the 12 had been equipping others because when you get to the upper room, you're going to see 120 people. So they, they didn't just get equipped because Jesus went around teaching them. The disciples spent some time with them too now. But then he also was calling them apostles before he left. So you are who you are when you're born. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. So now, Jesus here, he tells them, I, I, I gave you everything that you need. I gave you all the instructions. I need you to go and empower the world. But there's one thing I want you to do before you go. Go ahead and go to the book of Acts. Go to the book of Acts. I want you to read 4, 5, 8, 9. Acts chapter 1. See, a lot of times we're trying to put the cart before the horses, you know, in your walk with Christ. I ain't just talking about ministry. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost even if you ain't in ministry. Amen. You, you know, it, it's like having a car with no air conditioning when you just saved. You saved, but you're hot. You saved, but you ain't got no power. Don't you, you, when you go to the car lot, don't you want, don't you want all the bells and whistles? You want them to throw them in, don't you? When you like, I mean, I got moon roof, but I don't hardly use it, but uh, it ain't see. <laughs> got to have it. Okay, Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Read the Bible. And being assembled together with them. Mm -hmm. Talking about Jesus and his disciples. Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Good God. But wait for the promise of the Father, which, said he, ye have heard of me. Is that five? That's four. Okay, read five. For John truly baptized with you, <laughs> but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Okay, read verse 8. Oh, no, 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 stop right there, Lord. No, wait and read 8. And 9. Wait and read. But ye shall receive power mm. after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and all in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the world. Uttermost part of the earth. Okay, so you said I'm sorry. Nine. And when he had spoken these things mm -hmm. while they beheld, mm -hmm. and he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay. Now, now do, do y'all see the progression? Jesus meets with the disciples. You know, he had already spent time with them, three and a half years with them. He already instructed them. I think it's in the book of John. The Bible said he he breathed on them. And told them, receive ye the spirit. And the Bible said they fell backwards. <laughs> so when we get here to Acts chapter 1. And, 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 and he, he meet with the disciples and tell them now. Before you go on assignment. I want you to go to Jerusalem. I want you to go to Jerusalem. And I want you to stay there. Until the Holy Ghost fall on you. Yes. See when we give our life to Christ. The Holy Spirit comes to live in me. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. Woo, glory to God. I better not do that right now. Anyway, so he tells them, and when you stay there, he says something is going to happen. There was 120 of them there in that room, and the Bible said there was, was with one accord believing God for the same thing. And they said, uh, suddenly, <laughs> And they said suddenly. See, that's what happens sometimes in your life when you don't what you're supposed to do with your, with your walk in God. Suddenly some things are happening. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So the Bible says suddenly there was a sound. I told you sound perceived manifestation. Now you, you can say what you want. And the Bible said that the, the, the Spirit set on each one of them like cloven tongues. God will set down on you like he sat on that donkey. Now that donkey had never been ridden before. That donkey should have bucked. But when God sat down on you, you'll stop bucking. Yes. You won't buck no more with your wild self. <laughs> I wanted to say something else, but I don't cuss no more. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! The, the, the Bible do say in some places where that dunk is really called now. So I'm going to leave that to you. I don't know what kind of interpretation you got. But I say dunk it because the kids are sitting there. Amen? Amen. Amen. So they get there and they stay until, watch this now, so the beginning of the chapter says in Acts chapter 1, it says Jesus shows himself uh, unfallible, read it for me one. 
No, no, no. Read two. Until. What, what, what verse is it? Verse three. Okay, read, read verse three for me. To whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He was speaking of the things pertaining to what? The no, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was speaking the things of the kingdom of God. We should be teaching kingdom. Amen. So the Bible said he showed himself after his passion. What was his passion? No, no. His passion was to do the will of the Father. His heart. That was his heartbeat. He came to do the will of his Father. So after his passion, it, it, the Spirit of God raises him from the dead. He had walked the earth 40 days seen of men. I think one, one pastor ain't seen of 500 men. That must have been through one of my studies. I know you, I know you ain't studied it. But it was, he walked the earth 40 days after his resurrection. He's taken up in the cloud here. The Bible says that he, she read it in verse 9 that he took him up in the cloud. And there were two angels because the, 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 the disciple was standing there gazing. What verse is that? He said, why stand here ye gazing? Which ye? What, what verse is it? 11. Okay, verse 11. Acts 1 11. Look, look at it. Read it for me. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Woo! This same Jesus. This who? This same Jesus. This who? This same Jesus. The same Jesus. Ain't gonna be no, ain't gonna be no nothing, nothing besides this same Jesus. The same way he ascended, he gonna descend the same way. And he gonna rest on the Mount of Olives over in the Holy City. And the mountain is gonna split in two. Read all of it. Go ahead and read all of it. They, they, they ain't read it. Read it. Which is taken up from you into heaven. Shall so come in like a manner as he has seen him go into heaven. Hey, they in the morning. Did you see it? So he's gonna come back. But watch this. Now, now here, here's my point. Jesus walks the earth because God, God, God is, you know, there's a book of numbers. You know there's a book of numbers. Yeah. Numbers are specific to God. He does things for a reason. Right. Jesus walks the earth 40 days. They go to the upper room and they stay there. Because he said, you shall receive the Holy Ghost, not, Holy Ghost, not many days hence, afterwards. Right. Not many days, in the world, not many days from now. Right? Mm -hmm. They go to the upper room, they tarry for the Holy Ghost, and on day 50, mm -hmm. Holy Ghost falls. Mm -hmm. In that room, 10 days in the upper room. Mm -hmm. The number 50 is Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Jubilee. We ain't ready for this now. So although Jesus told his disciples to go, his desire was not for them to go immediately. Mm -hmm. he, uh, watch this. He tells them or commands them not to leave Jerusalem until you are empowered for ministry. Your first ministry is in you. You ain't to go out and evangelize nothing. Ain't to go and talk about nothing. It's like when you go to AA, if any of you ever been to NA, when you come in, they tell you sit down, shut up, don't say nothing because you don't know nothing. But then at the end of the meeting, they tell you something. Keep coming back. It works if you work it. <laughs> Anybody ever been to NAA? I have. They done talking to me this morning. Anyway, hey, they in the morning. We all, all, all. she been. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then let's have to watch this now. I, I want you. To, I hope you're taking good notes. Listen. So without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we're not. Oh, we're not ready to, to for ministry. We're not fully equipped. Watch this. Stay in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is church or home. Stay at your home base. And keep getting that word and keep sancti. <laughs> keep sanctifying yourself. Yeah. I need you to I need you to Google, I need you to Google word for me. I think it's in the book of Thessalonians. Uh the very God uh will sanctify you holy. Look it up for me. I think it's in the book of Thess. But watch this now, so I'm gonna keep moving while they look at it.
looking at it. So Jerusalem, because she made a declaration. Let me go over here. She made a declaration over there in Acts chapter 1. She says, God Almighty, I should already be there, shouldn't I? Listen to this now. Woo! I'm so excited I can't see up there. Well, watch that. Look, what verse was that? Eight in the morning. No, no, okay, well, hold, hold it right there for a minute. Just eight. He says, oh, You men of Galilee, what's going on with my Bible? I'm going to throw this dude here out by here. Gonna get me, and get me some I can, I can work with here. Okay, take it out. Okay, look here. You, there, you got the scripture. Hold on for a minute. Watch this. He tells them, Don't go yet. Right, watch this. Now, I'll tell you, without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can't witness yet and not be affected. One of the purposes of having the baptism of the Holy Ghost is in Acts 1 and 8. He said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem, that's home. Hello. Judea, that's your community. Come on. Samaria is what? That's other. Come on. It, 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 could be the, it could be the state. Watch this. And to the uttermost parts. So there's some steps in there. Let it start home first before it go anywhere second. But make sure you get the power before you move. And a lot of people in the body of Christ, they move it with no power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They got a form of godliness, but they're not the power thereof. That's it, that's it. Yeah, they know how to do church. Mm -hmm. They know how to do a service. But they can't draw nobody to God. That's it, that's it. My God. Woo! Look, well, watch this now. So anytime we allow people to go early, their building will collapse. Mm -hmm. Remember, I told you about the axe head. If you go out too early, you lose your axe head, which is authority. And then you got to come right back and get the one that you left to go retrieve it for you. And when you get when you get the axe head, both of you come back and sit down. So you can be talked up. Amen. It's a lot of people because they got see the body of Christ as a whole. We help. We just let people operate out of their gifts. Could you imagine now your your little gift giving me chill bumps? But could you imagine? Your chill, your little gift with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you better be walking on top of this building. <laughs> so that's the reason why a lot of people don't, don't think the baptism of the Holy Ghost is so important because I can give you chill bumps. But I found out that the Holy Ghost don't come with chill bumps. That's just an emotion. Oh, what you feel? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I feel chill bumps. That ain't God. I ain't seen chill bumps in the Bible. Is that the Holy Ghost comes with power. And that power is the power to witness. What we do? We foundation wrong. I feel chill bumps. Oh, there you go. Okay. So this guy right here, now listen, so that building will collapse because the foundation is not right. Most of the time, just looking at a house or a building newly built, it probably looks good. Mm -hmm. The only way we'll ever know if the foundation is sure is we have to have to allow time for storms to come. So you'll know just how strong your anchor is when a situation show up. And after the storm, you stand there, you all right, man, I'm good. <laughs> You can't see what I see. You okay? And then I tell you I'm good. <laughs> Who is good teacher there, boy? You hear what I'm telling you? Great day in the morning. Well, let's get right here. So, <laughs> so when them storms come, it, you know, the, 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 the storms, is, 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 is it could be anything in life that you're battling. Amen. And that's what lets you know whether your foundation is has been built on the rock or on sand. Sand is rock. Amen. But rock and sand ground it up so it never settles. Good God about it. You can't put sand in a porch to put concrete on top of because sand never settles. 
gotta put something with it. You gotta put something that'll stick like clay, sand clay. You can't have truth. Ain't gonna cause your house to stand. You need the whole truth. He said, know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We're giving people half stuff in the church, and they jumping and running. Oh, he preached this morning. What are you talking about? Oh, I, 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 I tell you, I went up this morning. I ain't getting no notes. Enemy coming next week. He's going to strip your neck. Come on, because what, we gonna, what, I, what, I, what I need is the word. Right. When, they, when the enemy, Jesus kept telling them, just kept telling Satan when he was in the wilderness, it is written. He didn't say it is a shout. He didn't say it is a speaking in tongues. He didn't say it was your gift. Keep around here. They, 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 look, they pump you up and then get you to throw your wallet in the offering basket. Come on. Now, then they say put a praise on it. Put a dollar on it. Sow your way out. Anybody, anybody heard that? I'm talking about that. Somebody say, wrong doctor. Wrong doctor. Listen to this right here. So, uh, I got I got, I got, got them see. Oh, God. Hold on a minute. Fogged up up here. Okay, I want to read, read this. So, times and storms to, to come. You know, it's the rain, floods, and the wind. If, the, if, if, it is, uh, if it sustains that, then the foundation of the house is solid. But if it doesn't, the house, the foundation is all. We need power before we go. Some went and some were sent. Just in case you're confused about the house and foundation, let me clear it up. The two foundations I'm talking about is the sand which is not sure and the rock which is sure. The sand is our way and the rock is his way. That's good stuff, boy. You can't make that up. No matter how hard you try. <laughs> So which is so which uh, is Jesus? If we're not living, uh, being taught right, then our house is built on sand. If Jesus is not the way, then it's the wrong way. I got to tell somebody this right here, straight in the grill. Jesus Christ is the only way to God. Amen. John chapter 14 and verse 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through by me. Except by me. And then Philip said, Well, show us the Father that it might suffice us. Jesus said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, Me and my Father. We are one. We can become one with God, but we'll never be Jesus. Amen. Now, 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 I'm going to say something. I know there are some scriptures that say we are a God, but you're really not a God. Amen. Wrong teaching. Amen. We're not little Jesuses. We're not little gods. We are children of God. Leave it right there. And stay on safe ground. Amen. Anything else is uncivilized. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's move. Let's move. Watch this right here. Uh, I, I, I got to get you to go somewhere for me. Go to map. I don't want to go there yet. I don't mind it either. Huh? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and read First Thessalonians for me. I, I want to talk about that, 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 the process of. Getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We first get saved. We give our life to the Lord. Then we find we find us a good church. Amen. A good ministry. And then we start sanctifying ourselves. Sanctification. I didn't define it. Let me let me define what sanctification is. Stop doing stuff that's not pleasing to God. Amen. Ain't no, ain't that, that's my definition. And you understand it real well. I got to give you no examples. You know what you're doing that. Not pleasing. Yeah. You know, God gave us a, a, a what you call a conscience. That conscience, Holy Spirit deals with it. And so when we do something wrong, Holy Spirit deals with your conscience, whether you saved or unsaved. Amen. 
So you got a built in guy. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like yeah. If a man going to rob a bank, why he cut his face up if it's okay? <laughs> <laughs> If, if breaking in houses was okay, why people do it with dark clothes on at night? I mean, I do it. They do it all the time, but mostly. So it can't be detected. Well, well I mean, because they know it's wrong. The Bible said we've done our deeds in the dark because our, because we were evil. Our deeds were evil. Amen. And then the Bible said we was in, we've been in darkness more we've been in the light. Amen. I know, I, you know, you know something. The thing about it, I don't care what people come in. My assignment is to put the truth out there. Mm-hmm. My assignment is like the man over in 1 Kings 13. My assignment is to tear down false doctrine. That's one of my assignments in the earth. Yeah. To tear down the altars of the enemy. Yeah. I think it's 1 uh, Kings 13 when talking about the prophet that God said they're going to tear down the altars of Baal. I want you to make, 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 make sure I'm right. It's talking about the man of God. First Kings chapter 13. Okay, that, that's where it's at. I won't give you nothing wrong. That man, I don't know what you're talking about. Look at that. He missed that. Well, it might be Second Kings then. How about that? <laughs> we ready to go? And when the very oh, God, Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, so tell them where you are. First Thessalonians 5 and 23. Okay. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. See that? And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when I give my life to the Lord, the Lord want me to come out of sin and stay out. I can sin, un- I can sin uh, unwillingly. Because if I do sin, most of you sin. If you sin and don't know it. God won't forgive you. He's gonna, he gonna forgive you for willful sin, but but it's it's a little it's, it's another penalty on that. Because the Bible said in the book of Hebrews, willful sin, there's no more sacrifices. It's like crucifying God, crucifying God again, crucifying Christ again afresh. You know, he, I mean, He forgives us, but He don't want. He said, "Little children, I wish that you sin not, but if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father. They have a way back." He, you know, you know, old folks used to say he a lawyer in the courtroom. You ever heard that? Doctor in a sick room. But well, that word advocate is a, a helper. I ain't got to go in between. That's what an advocate is. So he'll be your advocate. You know, Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for the saints. The enemy goes, the enemy goes and report to God and said that McNeil did this and it could be true. Because he's the accuser of the brother. He take accusation to the Father. Sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not. But we still need to repent from that that sin if, if it is true. Amen. Don't worry about accusation. If they're lies, you don't have to worry about it because he's a liar anyway. Okay? Okay, so now sanctify yourself holy. So, I mean, I mean uh, you sanctify yourself and as you sanctify yourself when, when, when my life is lining up and pleasing with God, he sanctifies me holy. And then holding baptism, Holy Ghost, it comes because I got to, I got to be purged. He said that. What was the last verse you read? That you may be blameless. Something said blameless. What you saying? You know, you know. He said, be blameless, body and spirit, body, whole, whole body, whole body. So, he, so he don't want, he don't want me putting stuff in my body that I shouldn't be putting liquor. Amen. People say, well, it's okay to drink in moderation. Why would you do that? He said, don't drink no strong drink. He said, strong drink is a mockery. So why would you want to drink a fifth? My fifth don't make me drunk. Well, why would you want to drink a fifth? You numb that little pain, and tomorrow you be hungover, okay. and the pain is still here. I am. You, what, 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 what was the last of Whole body. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit mm. and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus. He said your whole spirit, your whole body, your whole soul. God don't want part of us. He want all of us. He don't want you to be a six day, a six day liar. Seven day saint. You fooling yourself. 
Okay. Ah, uh, I don't want to go here. But. <sighs> okay. So then after that, after you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the God sent by your now you ready to do Matthew 28, 18 through 19. Go there for me. Matthew 28. Now you ready to go somewhere now. Yeah, you can you know you 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 can you can you can start witnessing your community and and and, and, and doing a little stuff and talking about the Lord, talking about the kingdom. No, 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 I'm sorry, don't talk about the kingdom. Talk about uh, uh preach the gospel, I'm sorry. Because you want to preach the gospel to sinners. Okay, Matthew 28, 18. No, 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 not 18, 19, I'm sorry, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore. No, no. Wait, go ahead and read 18. I, I, I need to know that we got the power, same power he rose with. Go ahead. Give me 18. And Jesus came mm -hmm. and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay, hold right there. I got that. I got that. I got that. That's a whole lot you're going to read. So when Jesus was raised from the dead, he makes a declaration. Holy Spirit raised me from the dead. Now I got all power in heaven and in earth. That same power he gives to his disciples. This right here is, is not the Holy Ghost, which is dunamis. Holy Ghost dunamis. Greek word dunamis, which is dynamite. This is a this right here is authority. This is the I'm giving you authority now. Amen. I'm giving you authority. Do you hear me? Because Jesus, you know, Jesus just he was just raised. So they hadn't had the baptism of the Holy Ghost yet. So they're giving them the authority. Amen. Amen. We got authority to do certain things. It's those keys to the kingdom. Okay. Read 19 now. After, after he gave you a little bit of authority, he gave you. It ain't merch. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the same name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So I'm so get Amen? Oh, okay. So that means it's so. <laughs> Woo! It ain't gonna change. Amen. So he gives me authority now to go and do what he called me to do. Go reach the lost world. But so I can reach the lost world better when I'm equipped. Instead of just going out with a bunch of zeal. And you still doing stuff. You ain't got to, hey man, come on to church with me. Y'all drinking together. Y'all smoking together. I ain't talking about cigarettes either. Talking about that, um, talking about that left hand cigarette, marijuana. Yeah, man, this came from the Lord, too. Yeah, but you perverting it. Use it for the wrong purpose. You ain't got no eye problems. That, hey, hey, that hemp plant. Whew, that's all I say. So going is so, so going is so going is the right thing to do after being empowered to go. It's the right thing. But we must know what to do. Jesus says, teach, not preach. Okay. Yeah. Preaching is, I'll tell you the preaching was 17 for saints. Uh, just read Matthew 5. Don't, don't, don't read it. Just read Matthew 5, chapters 1 and 2. I mean, verses 1 and 2. Don't read it now. Yeah, go ahead and read it. What's going on in my mind? They lose it. Go ahead and read it for me. Matthew 5. I'm coming in, y'all. I've almost been an hour. I'm coming in. And seeing the multitude, mm -hmm. and he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, That's it. Yeah. So once you get a person to Christ, then you can teach them. Amen. But you preach outside of the kingdom. You preach to sinners. Give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's the gospel of Jesus Christ? He was he was crucified, he was buried, and he rose on the third day. The Spirit of God rose, got him up on the third day, and he he lives forever. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel we preach them to men. If they don't believe that, they can't be born again. 
Amen. We, now we're talking about true conversion now. We see, the, thing, the thing about people, some people ain't been converted yet. Some people are talking salvation with their mouth, but their life ain't lining up. Yeah, 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 it to be line upon line, precept upon precept. Something got to be, something got to correlate. It's got to be in agreement with your life and your your lifestyle and your mouth. Oh, we okay. Ah. Okay, so the, so the church today have missed the mark on the instructions. We are constantly hooping and hollering, and Jesus told us to teach all nations. Hosea 4 6 said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Jesus gave the apostles these instructions before he ascended back to heaven. He had already finished his assignment on earth. He finished his assignment. Ephesians 4 9, Jesus here breaks himself up into five pieces and shares himself with the church, which is called the fivefold ministry. So he breaks himself and he's distributed out. This is called the hand ministry or the hand of God, if you will. This hand ministry is what feeds the body of Christ until it becomes a perfect or mature man called a weos. So we all come into the unity of the faith. So we all come into one person saying the same. In the, in the, in the, in the upper room, they became one. They had the same mind. They were praying the same thing. They became one. That's so why all of them received the same thing. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. God's kingdom is an upside down kingdom. The way the scripture reads is apostle, prophet. This is in, in Ephesians 4. Evangelist, pastor, and teacher. That's what it reads, right? Amen. But if you look at this, but if you look at the structure. You got apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. That's the way it's listed. It's listed in rank structure and order. But in the body of Christ, it operates differently. Ask me why. Because the strongest part of the, the strongest part of the building is the foundation. And the foundation holds up the rest of the body. We got it back. We'll set the apostle on top of us. How you doing, apostle? I'm doing good. How y'all doing? <laughs> y'all see this stuff, man. Y'all better get off me. Y'all don't see none of this I'm talking about. Yeah, man, I was, I was listening to a guy on YouTube when the guy I listened to regular. And he said when he he said when he went to a, a conference, he said they had walkie talkies. So when he pulled up and said, he just pulled up. <laughs> <laughs> well, <look. laughs> it took him because he said, man, they do too much. He said, man, let's just get me in. Oh, we're we coming in the building now. <laughs> and before they could get in the building, he said that the apostle said that uh, I got a guy with me that likes to clown. He said a helicopter was going overhead. He told the guys, make sure you get the helicopter over the bottom of <laughs> Woo! We do too much. We got this thing structured the wrong way. Amen. That's why a lot of times when you see them, when you go to church and you see the chairs up on the pulpit, you see the big in the middle, the big in, in the middle, that's the chief. Hello, that's the chief. But I got a problem with that concept because when they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, they didn't know who Jesus was. They had to kiss. Judas ain't going to be the one that I kiss. Because Jesus looked just like all of them. I mean, because I wear a suit and I ain't trying to outdo nobody. Anybody can wear a suit in there. Amen. Now, if I want to, if I want to spice it up. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what would be the purpose of that, though? So my thing is, why do I always want to be known? Everybody to know who we are. Who was in a meeting one? Who was in a meeting once? And uh, it was a men's meeting. And the guy said, "You know what I mean, brother?" He was talking to the pastor. And the pastor said, "No, that's pastor." I'm looking at you. I said, "Man, really? This man talking about some serious stuff." And there you go, hung up on titles, idiot. That made me hot. It made me hot. Okay, uh, I mean, strike idiot. I'm sorry. That was the wrong word. Anyway. <laughs> That was wrong. Lord, forgive me. Right on TV. <laughs> Listen to this right here. So, 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 so the strongest part of the body project, he is the one that should be on the bottom. 
of the foundation. He holds up everything. Everybody else, the apostle, should be holding, holding them up in prayer, ministering to the people, teaching the people. Amen. He he knows a little more than you know. Well, God put him up here and he don't know no more than you know. Amen. I ain't talking about I ain't talking about just Bible college either. Bible college give you a lot of information. No revelation. Amen. Don't give you no revelation. Just a lot of information. Been there. Done that. Don't know no more than I do. People get enough paper to start a fire. Good knows not what I'm saying, but it mean, it just knows. You got to get the revelation. Holy Spirit got to give you the revelation. Yeah. I got something I want, somewhere I want you to go. Let's see. God Almighty Jesus. Okay, I, I got to get through this. Y'all got, I, I got to give y'all this. Can I give it to you? Amen. So many fathers in ministry have contracted the Saul Central. Because you got fathers in ministry now. They're jealous of their sons and they're out to kill them. Just like Saul. Saul was out to kill David. But David was putting his life to help him. When an evil spirit came on David, they called him, I mean, on Saul, they called David in the, because he was an anointed minstrel. He played and the evil spirit left. I can imagine Saul probably in that cross eyed, tender eyed. And the man of God came in and played for him and the spirit left. But well, you want to kill a man that's helping you? This, oh, this, this, this is already a rope song. <laughs> that's good stuff here, Paul. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> then, see what happened when you throw the rock out. <laughs> so this is right here. So a real father pours into his sons and watch them grow. They don't take from them. I ain't never took nothing from my son. Not as he gave it to me now. It all depends on what it was. I ain't gonna tell him, you know, you got to give me this. You got no. A real father helps his son. My spiritual dad, he never asked me for nothing. Never asked me for nothing. He come when he comes to the ministry, man. He he I mean, he tell me, you the pastor. Tell me what you want me to do. He don't come in and tell me what I need to correct and who I need to sit down and who I need to raise up. He don't do that. But then you got some of these jokers in some of these organizations. They'll go in and tell you how to run it, how long to run it, and when to shut it down. Ain't that crazy? You should have left that joke away with that. You shouldn't even brought him in your house. Everything you've done in the house wrong. Change this. Change that. That one ain't got no business sitting in the door, on the door. Put that one over there. Do this. You ain't heard God nowhere, have you? Okay. I, 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 I got to give you this. Here. Second Timothy 2.15. Study and show yourself approved to God. A work but need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy. Our first focus should be to show ourselves approved not unto man but God. Not man, although we should submit to them. Amen. We should submit to authority both sacred and secular. Everywhere you go, even on your J-O-B. Give me Hebrews 13, 17. Amen. We'd rather go on a job and yes, a boss, yes, a boss. Oh, yeah, 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 boss. Yeah, boss. And then come into church. Who do you think he is telling us what we got to do? <laughs> Who you think he is? You know what Pastor said? They talk about giving a dang on. Uh, talk about every member got to give a hundred dollars for the Who you think he is? You, are you there? Hebrews 13, 17. Read the Bible. Obey him. Oh, no, do what? Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself. For they watch for your soul. Lord. As they that must give account, they that they may do do it with joy and not with grief, for that is a problem for you. So now, so now, when you're gonna miss work that day, you call in and tell the boss. You know, I'm feeling like I'm nowhere like I'm ready to come this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but Sunday morning come and I don't see you, I don't hear nothing either. But you want me to give an account for you. Hey, Pastor, I need you to write me a, a, a character letter. I'm going to court. You want me to tell them the truth or lie? 
You going with a 20 piece suit on, standing before the judge. You want to look good then. But you come into God's house looking like who done it and why. <laughs> but we, but we, but we, 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 we are yes or false on the job now. I need you to work a little bit. Yes, yeah, suppose I got you, Boba. You can depend on me. Can I actually come over here and cut grass? Man, I got something to do on Saturday. <laughs> but you ain't doing it for me. But you asked me. Then you come in Sunday morning and y'all looking good. And you like, you look all right. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get past that. We got to get past that. We got to submit. Submitting unto God requires us to submit unto another human being. Amen. That's submitting unto God. Amen. You can't submit unto God and not submit to human beings. Okay? We ought to give diligence or exert ourselves in the Word of God. We should be so consumed with the Word of God that we become a Word in flesh. Ah, uh, John 1 14 says, He became flesh and dwelt among us. Go, 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 go to John 1 14 and dwelt among us. And we beheld uh, the only begotten of the Father. And He came. I want you to, I want you to read all of them. There's more than that. See, we halfway, we halfway quoting scriptures. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. And the word, oh God! And the word was made flesh, mm. and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Come on, full of grace Woo. and truth. Good God Almighty, He was full, and He was full of the anointing, full of the Holy Ghost. He had the Spirit without measure. All He got to do is look at you, and you would say, "What was the good?" Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. He, he, he was now he was really apostolic. He shook the atmosphere when he walked in. Amen. They got mad when he showed up. Demon said, What do we have to do with you, son of God? You come to torment me before my time. He yeah, hadn't said nothing. He just walked in. <laughs> Anybody said that to y'all. Man, they smell rubber work. Rubber words like he boarded a train in London. He bought a train and ride somewhere. He said he gets on the train and he sits down. And he said there were some people sitting across from him. And he said people on the train begin to bow down saying what must we do to be saved? He said he ain't never seen nothing. But the presence of God is what he carried. Could you imagine the goosebumps you'd feel? <laughs> <laughs> you goose. <laughs> okay. So we should be okay. Wait, I'm sorry. So we should be a word in flesh. We ought to be living examples for Christ. First Peter two five. We ought to be living epistles read of men. So if somebody would look at your life and you say you're a Christian, would it lead them to heaven or hell? Who would it lead them? I'm quitting, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to cut me in. I'm glad I am. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Look at the one watches right here. Um, I'm getting there, y'all. There's no time for us, to be for us to compromise or sugarcoat the truth of the word. We must correctly interpret the word of God and bring it straight and uncut. Straight and uncut. It's going to hit all of us. Don't pick and choose scriptures. And use them to justify your condition or your situation. Amen. Boy, this good stuff in this morning. You got your, you got your tight, you can release, you got your tight in it. So we must teach the word of God without respect to persons. We must call sin sin, no matter who it is. If the pastor is in sin and you know it, get with him. Go to him. Go to him. I said him. I'm going to leave that there. Go to him. Amen. I'm sticking with the Bible. Y'all can see what you want. Oh, let's see. The Bible declares that it is a, 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 a woe to those 
who hear and don't obey. And to those that, that see and don't say, it is blood on their hands. Did you hear me? The ones that see and don't say. Ezekiel 33, 1 through 7 is for preachers only. Did you get it? Amen. Watch this. So regardless of who the word hurts or offends, we must teach and preach the truth. Amen. Regardless of who it offends. Luke 17 and 1 says, uh, it's impossible that offense won't come. Then it also says, warm to the one through which offense comes. So don't offend people purposely. I asked my, I asked my, 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 my spiritual dad, I asked him, I said, uh, I said, well, I said, what happened, man, when you, when, you know, people think you, you preach the stuff that they in. I said, Do we don't, we don't pick and choose, right? He said, man, anything in the Bible you teach, you preach and teach is going to offend somebody. So he said, just keep moving. He said, just keep moving. Amen. Amen. You finished with me? Oh, okay. Oh, I want you to go somewhere for me. Find, find me, uh, find me, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail. I need that. Matthew 16, I believe. See the 16, 18, or 18, 16, so, somewhere up in there. I need to find it for me. I, I, I need that scripture. Matthew 16 and 18. Okay, uh, read, me, uh, read me Matthew 16, 18. Hold on, hold on a minute. Regardless to who who the truth offends, we got to do uh we got to preach the truth and preach and teach the truth anyway. People will get over their feelings. The truth will always upset you before it blesses you. Amen. Amen. Read Matthew. Well, yeah. Matthew 16, okay, read the Bible, Father. And I say, uh huh. Also unto thee, uh huh. That thou art Peter. Woo. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I need you to go up one. I need you to go up and say, Jesus. Go up and wait start and say, Well, Jesus said, Who do men say that I am? That's 15. Okay, read. He says, He said unto them, uh -huh. Go home, say that I am. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon or Jonah, for flesh and blood have not. Revealed it unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. Uh huh. Now read it. Go ahead. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay. This is the truth. This is what the church should be built on. Mm -hmm. right. He's, Peter asked, uh, Jesus asked, asked the disciples, well, Who do men say that I am? Some say that you're lies, and some say you're some great prophet. But he said, I understand what they're saying. Who do you say that I am? He actually, he actually 12. And, and, and Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Peter, flesh and blood didn't give you this, but my Father which is in heaven. He said, Upon this revelation, upon this truth, I'm going to build my church, and nothing is going to be able to come against it. So when you build your life, on truth, on the revelation is truth. The gates of hell, anything, you're going to go through stuff, but it won't consume you. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19, it says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So the word that I got in, inside of me, what I carry around with me, which is the presence of God, when the enemy comes in, He's coming, but when he come, he finds nothing in me. John 14, 30. Jesus said the enemy is coming. The press of this world is coming, but he finds nothing in me. What was Jesus saying? He finds no connection. When the enemy comes, he found a connection. If you're still doing something, you ain't got no business. Connection. That's a connection. Yeah. That's a tie that's you got to be cut. And that's why, and that's a door open. That's a crack. Ephesians 4 27 says, give no place to the enemy, to the devil. That's a place open. It's got to be, you know, you, you, you know the routine. Cut it loose. Separate. 
It's a reason why the doctor. It's a reason why the doctor cuts an umbilical cord. It's a reason why. The baby time is up now. Amen. Woo. Glory to God. When your time, hey, when your time is up, cut and move. You got to cut and move. Sometimes it's painful to cut. Eee. But guess what? But when you cut, it frees you. Unforgiveness. No, no, unforgiveness don't freeze you. No. Un unforgiveness keeps you tight. That's right. Keep you tight. Yeah. But, forg but forgiveness, it cuts. It free. And not only do it free them, it frees you to free two people. See, the enemy can get two. All right. My last little piece. Teaching and preaching the word of God will not make you popular. I'm talking about the truth. It won't get you. It won't get you a lot of engagements around. Okay. The first thing people start saying that joke over there, man, that stuff he preached, that stuff ain't right. I'm telling you, it, it ain't, it ain't, that joke don't know what he's talking about. But he take you straight to the Bible. They can show you more than one place. And that stuff they talking about over there, they can halfway show you. But that's part of the scripture. No, 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 I need all of it. I need all or none. I don't need to be half baked. I need to be big. I don't need to be well done. That's what I want to hear. I ain't talking about no burn up in the hell either. I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. You've been faithful over little or a few things. I make you rule over much. Amen. 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 Make sure that while you're building your life, building your house, building on the right stuff, Amen. upon this rock that was solid, upon this revelation, your house is built on revelation and built on Jesus Christ. It's going to be right. Yeah. It's gonna be right. It's hard, but it's right. Yeah, it's a, it'll, it'll challenge. It'll challenge everything in you. Man, I got I got one more river to cross. But once I get across it, I'll be in my Canaan land. Amen. On my way to my destiny, I might step in a few mud holes. I might fall in a few ditches. I might get off course a little bit. But when I repent, come on, what am I talking about? That's all. If anything, it will gain your gain your enemies by teaching and preaching the truth. But I would rather have God as a friend than a lot of people stoke at my ego. Amen. Come on,